Hello, my name's Lee Chapman and I'll be tonight on the Online Prosperity Show where I'll be speaking to you about how to become the best man you can be and your responsibility to teach others never ends. I look forward to seeing you tonight. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got Mr. Lee Chapman himself. Mr. Lee, how are you doing, my man? I'm awesome. How are you? It's good to have you on. It's good to actually be on the show. Fantastic. Now, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee is on a mission. He wants to help others become the best that they can be. And his passion is to help men become better fathers, um, better in their relationships. And this will then in turn produce great community leaders and family role models. Now, he wants you to remember that as a man, you have what it takes and the responsibility to teach others that never ends. Now, Mr. Lee, how did this all come about? And tell us a little bit about your story. Um, I suppose it's long and varied, but long, um, long story short, um, I grew up in a family where um, both, both parents were married, both grandparents were married, and I came from a, a very nuclear family. And um, just through work, I came across a lot of people that didn't have that. And I've seen a lot of people, especially in business, get into business and then um, concentrate on, on work and then having to come home one day and find out that the partner wants to leave and split the business and split the family and everything just starts to fall in a heap. And I just started to unpack that. I thought, well, if I don't start training on something that I'm really passionate about um, and it's not being taught in schools and it really doesn't get talked about much in church and it doesn't get taught about much in communities, well, where else are people going to learn it? And you've got a whole generation of young boys that don't have a father figure and the problem just seems to exacerbate and keeps on rolling so i just decided to do something about it understandable well you are doing a magnificent job hence the reason we've got you on the show today now just from what you've learned and your experience and in the time that you've been working doing um you know this why is it important to have a work-life balance because i think basically what i've what i've discovered is you need to have four f's in your life you need to have faith you need to get them in this order if you do not get them in this order i've seen too many people fall in a heap you have to have faith first now that not necessarily be religious faith but faith in yourself or your creator or your spirit whatever you want to call it the second f is family the third f after that is fitness and the final one is finances i've seen too many people in business chase finances first and let their faith, their family, and their fitness fall apart and it's all fall in a heap. So I've found if you do those four in order, it seems to work out. And if you don't, it leads to ruin. Understandable. So the four Fs, the faith, the family, faith, fitness. Fitness and finance last. Don't go chasing finance first because if you, if you chase finance and let your fitness go, well, what's the point of being rich if you're sick? You know I mean, what's, what's the point of that? Yeah, you can't do well if you actually don't um, feel well. All right, so so with this, you did mention some people might get a little bit apprehensive when it comes to the faith aspect there. Can we just unpack that a little bit, what you refer to when when we're talking about the faith? faith, faith. Sure, faith, faith has a lot of connotations for a lot of people and that really depends on what you've been brought up with. If you've come from a very religious background, faith has a different connotation than someone that doesn't. But I think to get into business, you've got to have faith in, in your ability that you can do it and there will be faith. You've got to test yourself. Things aren't going to go happen for you until you actually step out in faith that you can do it because a lot of times when you get out in your business, especially for yourself, a lot of your family and friends aren't going to have faith in you. You really have to step out in your own belief that you, you have what it takes to, to do what you want to do. And then it's up to you whether you get in touch, touch with your creator, your spirit or whatever, whatever um, spirituality, if you, if you have a, if that's something that you have. But you need to have faith in your ability first. I understand. Yeah. Yes, if you lack self-belief, self and you right. doubt yourself, there's no way you can uh, move further with, with anything else. <laughs> Thank you so you know, much. That's Thank right. You can, you can lead. If you can lead one, you can lead many. But if you can't lead one, you can't lead any. Understandable. That's, that's a really profound uh, statement there. Now, from what you've experienced and just life in general, Mr. Lee, 
Are women justified when they stand out in the open and say, where are all the good men gone? <laughs> I, I think they are justified to a point, but I, I guess it's because political correctness has just killed the male spirit so much that a lot of guys are just too afraid to speak up at work, open the door for the, for the boss because she's a woman. Like, do I open the door for her? Is she going to get bent out of shape if I don't open the door for her? I mean, what do I do as a guy? Um, and, and I think a, a lot of men are, are probably are afraid to actually do what they think's right. I mean, me personally, I'll open the door for a man or a woman. I don't get in a better shape. You know, if you have a problem with me opening a door for you because I, I just think that's the right thing to do, that's not really my problem. That's your problem. I'm just doing a courteous thing. Um, but I do get a lot of women in business because women are very emotional. So they do, they do business really well, but men not so much. And they just they get caught in the cycle of being male that they don't know how to, well, what do I do? How do, how do I, where, where do I even start? You know, so women, they are justified in saying it. And that's part of my mission to go out and help men be better versions of themselves. So you can in this world be, in fact, um, be the best man you can be by being courteous, dressing well, speaking well, knowing what to say in the right circumstances. Um, because political correctness has gone way too, it was okay. And now I think it's gone way too, it's gone kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of not. And most women I agree with that I speak to, and I speak to some very powerful women, and they think, yeah, it's gone that crazy now that, um, you know, I can wear a really hot outfit at, an, at, a, at a dinner and, and I won't get a peep because guys are just too scared to say, gee, Julie, you're really not nice in that dress or that, re that colour really suits you. They actually, they actually, women will actually want that. That's why the fashion and the makeup industry is a multi-billion dollar industry for that very reason. Understandable. They're doing it for the compliments, but the men are too, you know, passive enough to want to yeah. say that for lack of um the you know the confidence because they don't want to be on the wrong side of the law <laughs> understandable so you have um put out a couple of books one that is of particular interest is the unleash the men manual workbook just walk us through what people will get in that book and what what sort of information have you got in the men's manual so I, I bought that about basically I, it goes through um i actually have it hooked up to a youtube video so you download the book and then you get onto the YouTube video. Uh, I know I actually walk the guys through that and what you need to do. Um, I, I believe you actually become a man the second that you take responsibility for your life. I don't think it's a factor of age. Um, the closest thing we have to it is um, in the Western world is literally a Jewish bar mitzvah where, they, where the young boys take responsibility for their lives. We don't have that in the West. Um, and it's also true for women, but I walk the guys through that and say, well, what... What is it at our deepest core that makes us men? Um, why do we think the way that we do? And it's okay to think the way that we do. It's not that we're we're wrong. It's just the way that guys are wired. The same as women are more emotional. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just the way that women are wired. But together, we're a pretty powerful force. So um, I, I walk the guys through that. There's a lot of uh, a lot of great tips in there, um, and a lot of reflection on how they were brought up, their belief system how they can change that and different ideas of what they can look forward to, to as, as their masculine journey, as they go through the stages of male life. Understandable. Well, with the way, um, obviously stories and sitting around with elderly males is how, you know, uh, sons were being taught how to be masculine. Now the media is now playing that role in teaching men how to be uh, men. And then also there's people like yourself that conduct seminars, you write books and adventure camps and some sort of survival courses as listed on your website. Can you just walk us through some of the stuff that you do with the men so that they come back initiated or <laughs> as men, so to speak? Sure. Um, I've, I've done a lot of research and there's not one there's not one culture in the world that didn't at some stage or some still do have a male initiation ceremony where they would take the guys out. Um, they're taught the skills of their forefathers, whether it be swordsmanship, wrestling, hunting, gathering, um, all sorts of things. So I teach the guys how to, to make fire without matches and they think, well, man, if I can do that, I mean, 
I can do I can do anything. I mean, here's the thing. What what you're obviously a different culture to me. What what's your background? I, I was born what? and raised in Zimbabwe, uh, okay. in the southern part of Africa. Yeah. Okay. And what would be the what would be the male initiation in your community or your your ancestor your your background? Understandable. Now the modern way is for you to be able to milk cows. So you would have yeah. to actually go into the cow pen, tie up the cow's legs. Yeah. Tie it onto the wall by itself. There's kicking. There's uh, what do you call the head biting and everything else that comes in a cow. Dangerous. And it it's is dangerous. a dangerous thing to do. But if you can actually tie the cow onto the wall and um, tie up its legs and milk at least a, a liter of water, then that means you are. I mean, of milk. Then that means you are literally able to look after your family. We can't go hunting because of licenses, but normally you'd have to go and hunt and come back with some sort of food. But now, and you, yeah. Yeah, and you'd probably have to, at some stage, look after those cows to make sure they didn't get attacked by lions or whatever. So there's that responsibility as well, I would guess. Right. Yes, it's, yes. It's not, it, yeah, it's different in every culture. Um, and, you know, I was, I was speaking to a friend of mine and he's got a, um, a Maasai warrior background and he was saying that they don't do it now because it's obviously illegal to kill the lions, but they used to have to go out and hunt a lion, not a sick one, not some old, old-ass lion. They'd have to go out and kill a a young one with a spear. I mean, going, well, yes. North American Indians, the braves would go out and they would have to walk up to a bear and slap it in the face. Yes. Um, we don't do anything that extreme. Okay. We, we're not killing lions or slapping bears in the face, but we go out and, and we, we do some, we do some good work where we, we take the guys out field. Um, we have a, a situation where we have a pilot dressed, a guy, the guy's dressed as a pilot and we have to go and rescue him because he's got injured and we have to bring him back. So it gives the guys, they have to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that's important. And as well as doing other skills and things. And we have a good time. It's we, we sit around the campfire and it's it's a good time. It's Understand, really great. Understandable. Um that reminds me of uh, I don't know if you've seen the two blogs, Hamish and Andy, on their yes. trip the trip to South America. They have um a tribe that has um ants that have the worst yes. sting ever. I think um, you thought, you, if you would have full of ants. Yeah, gunshot yeah. ants, because it feels like being gunshot. Yeah, and you have to put your hand in the stump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we don't do that. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well, obviously, we probably have uh, boys that are in the audience that are ready to graduate to become men, and they've been listening to you and, you know, your expertise and your knowledge and also your advice. How can people get a hold of you there, Mr. Lee? Um, I pretty much live on Facebook. So if you, if you find me on Facebook under Lee Chapman, I also have a business page, uh, MrLeeChapman.com, a website. You can look that up. And um, I'm, I will be speaking um, in Sydney uh, this uh, Friday and also on a Saturday. I'll be speaking on relationships. Um, so if you want to get in contact with me, I've got um, some free tickets to that if someone's interested. Um, it's a big networking event. There's going to be roughly 100 people there on Friday. And then I have a half-day workshop on the Saturday. But if you contact me through Facebook, I can certainly shoot you some free tickets for that. I've only got 10. Um, otherwise, it's uh, $47 a ticket. Understandable. I'll put all the links, um, yeah. I'll put all the links uh, of that yeah. in the show notes there uh, so that we can um, yeah, fully utilize that opportunity yeah. with the 10 tickets. Now, Mr. But I live on Facebook. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, Mr. Lee, have you got any parting words, um, you know, to initiate us? Um, I feel like I feel like I'm a man now. I don't know if <laughs> after having spoken to you, <laughs> is that, is I, I think parting words. I, I, yeah, I think the biggest thing is that um, you can take away that it, it's okay to be it's okay to be a male. It's okay to think the way that you do. And um, being, being a male is you become a man the second you take responsibility for your life. Um, I've seen too many men that are in their 40s and 50s and as soon as something doesn't go their way, it's Julie's fault or my bosses are so-and-so or, you know, the police officer pulled me over because he's a, well, you know, whatever. No, you actually become a man the second you take responsibility for your life. And that happened to me when I was 21. It didn't, it didn't happen when I was 18. I had a, um, a very interesting episode. Um, I could tell you about it if you've got time, but um, yeah, it's something that you become a man from that second on, and not a second before. I and it can only, yeah, and it can only be recognised from another man. 
Understandable. Well, thank you so much for your time. And obviously, people um, that have been watching this uh, show, feel free to jump onto Mr. Lee's uh, website. You could learn a thing or two. Uh, and also purchase some of the books that he has on there, especially the manual that he uh, we talked about that really teaches you the ins and outs of relationships and things like that. See, now Mr. Lee is on a mission, like I said earlier on, to help others to become the best version of themselves, which is also in alignment with this show here, where we want you to have either a business or a life that's profitable and you're actually enjoying it. So if you're going to be putting out your true colors there, your authenticity showing out and you being the true man, not only for yourself, but you actually create community leaders out of the people that you're talking to and you become a role model to the young people that are seeing you each and every um, you know, walk of your life. And like what Mr. Lee says, remember, as a man, you have what it takes and the responsibility to teach others and that never ends. So keep exploring um, your options and keep being that man you were born to be. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee, for um, That's right. being with us on the show today. Yeah, that's right. Just remember, ladies, that uh, as men, we do notice you. You are beautiful, even though we don't say it as often as we like. And remember that, men, you have what it takes and your responsibility to teach another never ends. Understandable. Thank you so much for those parting words again. Not a problem. Yeah.